Oh, howdy all, grab yourself a drink, it is time for some Path of Exile discussion. I am going to be running a private league over the next couple of weeks. This is something that I did in the dying days of the Crucible expansion as a bit of a test run. This time, Toucan Private League and Treasure Hunt is coming back in a bigger and better form than last time, and it's going to be starting this weekend, four hours later than leagues would typically start. So if, like me, you're on the east coast of Australia, instead of being 6am like a league start usually is, it'll be at 10am. If you're in the United States, be something like 6pm in the evening on a Friday. And unfortunately, if you're in Europe, the time zone's going to be terrible for you. But unlike a trade league, it's much less important to be there at the very start of the league. So you'll be able to get a good night's sleep on Friday night, then join in on Saturday when you get up. Lots of chat related to this league will be taking place in Global Channel 16807. It's not mandatory to be part of this, but it'll be a good chance to chat with other people who are in the Toucan League. And if you ever forget the number, it is just 7 raised to the power of 5. You can also brag about items that you've got and let the world know what you're asking for them in the chat channel Trade 16807. Well, that didn't really take off during the last Toucan League, so I don't know if it will in this or not, but Global 16807 definitely had a lot of people in it for the entire event. So at the point in Ancestor League where even though the league has been popular, there is starting to be a noticeable drop off in players. This tends to be the case five or six weeks into every league. And at this point, I was faced with a bit of a choice. Three things I could do. I could either try and put on an event for the community like I'm doing, I could take a month off, or I could continue making videos, but just accept that everything's going to get 50, 60, 70% less viewers than it would get during peak Path of Exile period. Out of those options, I decided that the community event was the way to go. One of the main things I like about private leagues is that fresh starts in general in Path of Exile are an exciting time. When you've got nothing, item drops feel much more significant. And for me at least, the most fun part of Path of Exile is not killing a particular boss the 24th or 54th time when you're powerful and you just crush the encounter on autopilot. It's when you're doing it the first time, when it's a real nail biter whether you're going to succeed or not, and where a fresh start in Solo Self Found offers one way that you can get this fresh start experience, I prefer the alternative. Unlike Solo Self Found, you do have the option of not being solo, and you also have the option of skipping any particular content that you don't like. For example, if you really, really, really hate heist, in Solo Self Found, the only way that you can get items out of heist is by heisting. Whereas in trade or a private league that allows trade, you can trade with someone like me that is quite happy to run heist and you can focus on your favourite areas of the game instead. That's one of the things I really like about private leagues. Now private leagues allow you to change the rules a little bit, but you can only change them within certain limits. And the most important foundational principle is that these rules changes can only make the game harder. They can never make the game easier because otherwise private leagues would become a way to pay to cheat at the game, to pay for an advantage. This tends to work pretty well because private leagues are more popular with experienced players than they are with new players anyway, and experienced players are more likely to find it exciting and new to have a rule set that makes the game slightly harder. Now the available rule sets for private leagues allow you to make the game viciously hard if that's what you want. We're not going that far in Toucan League. We're instead going for a fairly light touch where Toucan League will be a little bit harder than the base game, but it's not intended to be brutal. So this is definitely not Gauntlet and it's not trying to be Gauntlet but it will still be a slight difficulty increase up over the softcore trade league. Note that in the screen grab from the setup that I've got there, only the red rules apply. The first rule that we're going to be adding is that items will drop scoured from most mechanics. What this means is that if an item would drop as a unique item, it still drops as a unique item. But if it would drop as magic or rare, it instead drops as a normal item. This means that veiled items will be much rarer, although you will still be able to find various mechanics that will provide them. And additionally, mechanics like corrupt strong boxes and vile side areas are going to be much worse. It might be several days until any individual in the league at all gets access to the Elrion mana cost reduction craft. And until that point, you're not going to have access to that bench craft at all. Now the second rule change we're making is that monsters will have a modest boost to area of effect. This is a 35% increase to their AoE, which is approximately a 16% more multiplier to the radius of monster skills. And finally, Player resists, including Chaos, will start at negative 20 rather than starting at zero. Now these will make Acts 1, 2 and 3 considerably harder than normal, and you might find that you need to spend a little bit more time gearing up, and certainly a lot more currency gearing up, than you normally would in Acts 1, 2 and 3. But nothing you won't be able to manage, you'll just have to actually apply currency to your gear in a way that you might not normally need to do in order to progress through the game. After that, the increased area of effect is going to change around the relative difficulty of some bosses. For example, the Brian King, reasonably easy boss for veteran players to beat in Act 6, but going to be quite a bit harder here. 
And you might find that Axix's Brian King, as well as Rizlatha, as well as Aberath, may actually be harder than Innocence in Act 5, whereas in the base game, Innocence is arguably the hardest of those bosses. Other than that though, the most important change that's being made is going to be that items dropping scoured, because it's going to incentivize you, and not just incentivize you, but require you, to do an increased amount of crafting for yourself, even from early in the game. The second big thing that I really like about Private Leagues is that you end up with an economy that is not warped by Mera Crafting. It's only a tiny percentage of the player base that are engaged in Mera Crafting, but they actually do consume a very large percentage of a lot of the rarest currency items in the game. Here we're not so much talking about Divine Orbs, we're talking about the really rare obscure stuff like Tempering Orbs, Tailoring Orbs and the like. When was the last time you used a Tempering Orb? Chances are if you're in Solo Self Found you may never have had one, and if you play in Trade League, you've probably had them, but if you have had them, you've then gone and sold them to someone who is doing a Merocraft and is potentially willing to throw 100 or 200 of them at a particular weapon. In a Private League economy though, there's a lot more of these going around, and as a result, you have more flexibility to actually use these really rare sorts of items. The other consequence of the different economy is that you tend to have a more cooperative economy. It's not that you're required to be cooperative, you can be as cutthroat as you want, it's just that the people who are the most ruthless in trade tend to stay in the main trade leagues and just not be that interested in a private league, or alternately if they do jump into a private league, it's because they want to have some fun rather than as a way to build their in-game wealth. The other major thing we're doing in the Toucan Private League and Treasure Hunt is we're going to give a chance for less popular ascendancies to shine. The playbase has mostly sold which are the best ascendancies in both trade, which is the first of the two rows you see below, and in solo self found, which is the bottom of the two. But how different would things look if we only allowed unpopular ascendancies? Well, private leagues aren't able to enforce an outright ban on specific ascendancies, but leagues can be themed around them, and Toucan League will be. We're going to be politely asking players, and not in any way requiring this, to play the least popular ascendancy for their chosen class, or alternatively, to play one of the two ascendancies that were reworked in this recent patch. So that's the Chieftain and the Guardian. The final list of eight ascendancies is the Necromancer, the Assassin, the Raider, the Gladiator, the Berserker, the Chieftain, the Guardian, or the Ascendant. There is no prohibition against playing the more popular ascendancies, but we just wanted to give these ones a chance to shine. There will also be a Treasure Hunt minigame, as you can probably guess from the event name. Path of Exile's got a lot of obscure items that people don't really care that much about in Trade League, but they drop from unusual places and that can be interesting items to hunt. For example, Shadow Stitch, Zergle's Crank, Dusk Dawn, Fishing Rods. All of these are really obscure items, all of these are things that you probably won't find in normal gameplay, but that can push your gameplay in different ways if you go out of your way to try and farm them. Toucan League is going to have 48 hour challenges to work together with other players to find as many as possible of some of these items. These are going to be announced in my Discord, and I'll put a link to that down in the description of this video below, as well as baking it into the video here. Now it is possible we'll have to turn off that invite if it starts getting used extensively by spammers, but if that does happen, reach out in the comments of one of my more recent videos, and I'll then generate a 7 day Discord link for you. If you do get one of these treasures, it's going to be yours to keep, it's not like you have to turn it in or anything like that. What I ask you do though, is that you list it for trade for one Mirror of Calandra for the period of the 48 hours that it's a goal. This lets other players measure our performance as a group, see how many of this treasure that we've found. You're under no obligation to sell it, even if someone does happen to offer a Mirror. There'll be Bronze Tier, Silver Tier, Gold Tier and Ruby Tier goals for many of these item hunts, and sometimes the Ruby Tier ones won't be all that fair. For Days 1-5 to five, there will be a treasure hunt added as well, but they're mostly going to be about building a foundation for your league progress rather than being about treasure hunts. So the bronze tier goal is going to be to achieve level 80 and be fully ascended by day 5, and you can have as much help as you want on your way there. For silver tier, it's going to be a bit harder. Here your goal is going to be to beat the eternal labyrinth and get level 85 without getting help, or if you do get help, then you're going to need to go to level 90 instead. For gold tier, the goal is going to be harder again. This is going to be to achieve 110 atlas bonus. And I did tell you Ruby Tier could be nasty. For Ruby Tier, the goal is going to be to achieve all 12 favourite map slots. That does mean that you need to defeat Maven's Invitation the Feared. And also any one of the following pieces of aspirational content. Either clear the Simulacrum Wave 30, delve to depth 500, complete the Uber Boss of your choice, or defeat a Flawless Breachstone. And just for clarification, Uber Boss does not include Uber Elder when fought at monster level 84, but does include Uber Duba Elder when faced at monster level 85. 
Later treasure hunts will be announced on my Discord, which again is linked here. I will have to manually give you full access to the Discord, but until that point you will be able to read the announcements and probably be able to participate in one or two channels there. One final thing, Private Leagues cost an average of 6 store points per player that joins them, so if you're interested in playing in this and you can afford to, feel free to throw in some store points, 20, 30 or whatever you can afford, into the points crowdfunding when that comes up at the end, but you are under no obligation to do that. If you can't afford to do that, there will be plenty of people who are more than happy to throw in a couple of bucks. So that is the Toucan Private League, hopefully it sounds like fun to you, if it does, then you'll be able to sign up via the link that I'll put down in the description below. Otherwise, I will see you around. May your Valobs have interesting results.